years. Hello everybody and welcome to Greg's Vintage Workshop where I'm working to restore history one piece at a time. Tonight we're going to have part 7 of the 1929 Victor R32 TRF radio. We're going to recap the bypass capacitor. I make a replacement for the tar block on that and I'll also check some other components. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, so I'm going to show you something. I made a mistake and none of you guys caught it and uh, I was watching my own video the other night and I noticed that when I put these springs back I put them on backwards I've since corrected it here but originally I had in the video I had the long wire connected here and the short spring close to the body and that's backwards it wasn't until I watched my own video that I realized that I put them on backwards so I had to flip it back over here correct the springs getting ready to put the uh, can covers back on there and I'll flip it back over but I want to show you that that's a good reason to watch your own videos and also an even better reason to refer back to your photos because I did go back to my photos and sure enough they were backwards so anyway I want to show you that I caught my mistake alright let me show you where we're at right now so I did this off camera but I got my bulb socket back in place. I've got the bulb cleaned up. This is the original bulb, but it's not open, so I think it may be okay. Got it in there. The torsion rod that I don't know if I can get where you guys can see it. Maybe I can. Let me bring this over here. You guys can see in there that torsion rod that I showed you before that goes here and it had the little clevis that put the tension on it. And then there's the little roller inside there. I don't know if you can see that or not. I put all that back together again. And I got the bar all lubricated. And now when we rotate it, it moves like it should. That, this is the fine tuning, rotating it, or you can just slide the whole thing like this. If you got to do major adjustment, you slide it. Otherwise, you just fine tune it. So I got that all together. So I'm ready to start doing some other additional stuff in here. I'm going to still spray some Bow Shield, T9 Bow Shield in here uh, for anti-corrosive, but that's about as clean as I'm getting it. Right now what I'm doing is this three cap bypass capacitor. And it's basically a bypass capa capacitor for the 226 tubes. All right, I don't know if you guys are going to see this or not, or how blurry it's going to be. It is pretty small. But here is the first 226 tube right here. And here's the C7 cap here, and a C7 cap here going to ground across the filament. Okay, And then the third one is right here for this 226. All right, and it actually ties into the primary portion of the transformer right here for that 226 right there. So those are what's in that can and that's that one, that one, and that one is what I'm getting ready to replace. I apologize I don't have the, the TV on down here. I'd be able to show you this a little bit bigger, but that's what I'm getting ready to have to restuff. And here it is. So here it is. There's a cap here, a cap here, and there's one in the middle down there. So I'm going to take this apart and then I'm going to print something to hold the new caps. Let me get this thing out. Okay, I got all the wires off of it. I got all the, there's four tabs, one on each side, one on the bottom, one on the top. And I got those all bent down. Actually, this one right here is bent up. I'm getting ready to use my heat gun. I'm going to heat it and see if I can coax it to come out of there. All right, I coaxed it with the heater and now I'm pulling it on out. I figured I'd let you guys see it come out nicely it's uh, actually nice because it's got cardboard wrapped around it and I think that that helped it there we go tangled up the wires and there's the tail of it 
which is obviously the ground for them. And uh, I don't know that we'll be using that cardboard back because I'm going to print something out for it, but let me get that on off of there and we'll be back. Okay, so the plan is I am going to print a block like this and reuse this. There's three terminals. I'll cut those each off. I'll desolder those wires from it and then I'll make a new block that will house three of these in a staggered pattern so that I can pass the wires through and, and just uh, use those terminals. So I'll get that measured out and we'll get it made. I'll show you what we got when I come back. Okay, so let me show you what I've got here. I went upstairs to my 3D printer and I printed out a capacitor block to put in that metal can for the three 0 0.5 Two five bypass caps for the 226 tubes and this is what I came up with. I took my calipers and I measured the can. I've got 29 by 29 millimeters on the square by 48 millimeters long and the 48 millimeters long should account for this part with the terminals so I can reuse that as well as being able to tie the grounds together back here and to the ground lead that's in the thing and still be able to push it all together. Let me show you what I got here. So you can see I made it for three and I measured with my caliper so I could make sure I got the holes right. Let's see if I can get one of these stabbed in there. Well it's coming through there. There we go. Okay I got it started. You can see the wire coming through the end there. And then it's going to push in. And I got it going, yeah, probably about a quarter of an inch in there. Get the next one. There it is. They're all three the same depth. Caps pretty much all measure the same width and length and all that good stuff, so not that difficult to do. Get this one in there. And there they are. Keep it helpful if I keep it in the screen. And then these three wires will go in these holes. Like this. Let's see if I can get them in there. And keep you on screen at the same time. One of them in there. There's the second one in there, and I believe that's the third one in there. Yep, it's in there. So then I just push that all together like that. You can see it's smaller in width so that I knew it was going to go in the can perfectly. Hope if I show you guys. All right. So hopefully it's coming through clear for you. So now all I gotta do is pull each of these up so that my cap is fully seated and then I'll wrap this lead around like that for each one of these. Get my pliers here. I don't need but one good wrap on there because they're going to be soldered and I'll trim off the, the difference. Like that. And I'll go back and trim off the difference. I'll tie these three together and then we'll get it soldered to the other lead that's uh, still in the can. Let me bring you back when I get this together. 
So I got these three terminals all soldered on here. I got these three terminals all soldered on here. I left one leg. I've left this pretty flush to the bottom so that I have room to cram it in the can. And I'll take this last leg and solder it to the lead that's coming out of that can that's, uh, that's a ground. Let me get that done. So what I did was I took that tail that I had sticking off the, the one capacitor as well as the flexible lead that came out of the can and I got them soldered together back here. I pushed that little clump into one of the holes. That's why I recessed the caps back far enough so I'd have room to do that. So now I'm ready to see if I can get this thing squished back inside there or not. I did my dimensions right, it should go. If I didn't, it might not. So I guess we are going to find out together. I'm kind of hanging on this tube a little bit down here. Make sure I'm not sucking something in with it. There we go. It's in. And perfect. Perfect. Now all I have to do is push the tabs back over that cap and there it is. In like flint. So let me get those tabs bent over and I'll get these wires soldered back on and we'll go from there. So I got that all in there. Got my little tabs all bent back. So now just to make sure everything is good we're going to take our little magic box. I can put this where you guys can see it. I'm going to hook the negative side to the chassis. Just like a, one of the nuts here that hold the uh, RF cans in there. I guess we'll go like this. I'll hold it. Alright, so we're on the ground on the one side. I'm going to go with the bottom one. There we go. And we'll hit it. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's showing 219. Alright, and this was a 0 .22, so that should be pretty darn close. I don't think I can get it where you guys can see it. I don't know if it's showing up or not. Alright, now I'm going to move it to the top left one. i hit it again. 218. And we'll move it to the other one. Uh, the top right one, hit it again, and we're 219 again. So, so we're making good contact in there, everything is good to go, I can go ahead and put the wires on it. Okay, so I've got my big schematic up, so you guys can see better and so I can see better, mainly so I can see better. So the bypass capacitor block that, that I rebuilt I can show you better now on this print what we were talking about. It had the three um, 0 0.025 microfarad caps that I replaced with the O22s. So if we look at the schematic right here, here's our cathode on this 26 tube, which is self-heating cathode. And here is one of those C7s. Here's the other C7. And as you can see, going to ground and they're, they're basically interconnecting to all of the uh, 226 tubes. All right, and then here's this one here, there's the, th the third one right here. So that was that cap that I redid. So now we're going to look at some additional components. Now this coil here is the antenna choke right here, okay? And it's going to the grid of that 226 tube, the first 226 tube. And then we're also going to be looking at that volume potentiometer. And we're also going to be looking at this transformer right here for the detector. That's the detector transformer for the 227 tube right here. So let's take a look at these. So this is that little antenna choke and we're getting ready to test that and I've, I've done hooked my leads all up this is basically a ground to the chassis 
that's one side of it and then the other side of it is going to that grid of that 226. I'm hooked up with both meters, my little magic box as well as this one. So I figure I'll check, check it both ways and uh, we'll be able to hopefully get a good reading here. So and see how accurate these various meters and stuff are that I play with here. So we're going to go with this meter first. We'll hook that one up. And we've got 0.8 ohm. And this one's already hooked up. So let me turn it on. Get where you can see it. And it's saying we got 0.96 of an ohm. So eh, within a within a you know a tenth. So I think we're okay. At least it's not open. So I think we're doing good there. Alright, now we're gonna move over to the 227 detector transformer. Let me set that up. Now we're set up to check the detector transformer which is this round dealie right here and I'm set up now looking at the schematic one side of that uh, coil goes directly to ground and uh, the other side is going to the grid we're going to go ahead I've got my DMM connected to ground and then on this meter I've just got them both connected to the actual leads that are coming off of the transformer so we'll see what we get on that so let's do the DMM first And we got 30.5 ohms. Okay. And now let's hit this one. And we got 30.9 ohms. So pretty darn close. Again, reading pretty good. So that's the one side of the transformer. And the other side, we're going to go to the plate of the 226. And we can pick up one of those C7 capacitors or in, in, the, or in the circuit. Okay, so I just got this set up. I'm picking up the bottom of that bottom C7 capacitor, bypass capacitor, okay, because that's what we saw on the on the schematic. And I'll show you that again. I just got the, the camera set up, so I can't show you right this second, but I'll show it to you again as what we t uh, tested. So we're on the C7 capacitor, and we're on the, the grid of the 226 right now. So let's go ahead and do this one first. And we're showing 62.1 ohms. All right. Now I've got my meter DMM connected to this same C7. It's just up where you can't see it up here. I tied into the alligator on the other side. But now we can touch this one here with the DMM. And we got 62.1. So that's pretty darn close. So that's good. That uh, detector transformer for the 227 is good. There's nothing open on that. Okay, so showing you what we just checked on that detector, 227 detector transformer. This is it right here. Okay. This is where I checked it, where I said we were going to ground on the one side, and then the other side we went over to the grid up there. Okay. Now we're getting ready to take a look at the R9 um, grid leak resistor and capacitor for that. We haven't looked at that yet. But here's the other side where I said I could go up check it on the plate at the 226. That's, that's right there. And then down here is where if we follow it over, it's that C7. That's that C7 um, bypass cap that's in that three condenser block that it rebuilt and that's where I picked that up so that's how we tested that that was that circuit that we tested now we're getting ready to take a look at this R9 uh, grid leak resistor which is supposed to be a half mag and the C3 which I believe is 0 0.00025 I believe something like that so let's see if we can get those figured out and then we still have to also check this plate bypass cap here C5 so this is right here this is the R9 grid leak resistor and it 
is connected across the C3 capacitor. I don't think I can really check that capacitor with it being across it without taking it loose. And I really don't want to take it loose because these typically are okay. And unless I find otherwise, I'm not going to take it loose just to check it. But we are going to check the resistor. And I've got that hooked up right now. So let's just hit our little, I'm not going to do this one with the DMM82 because we ascertained that both of them are pretty close. So let's go ahead and see what we get here. Now I'm hoping you guys can see this stuff the way I'm seeing it. So it's showing 516.0K. So it's supposed to be half peg and that's what it is. Okay, so now I'm hooked up right here. And this is that C5 uh, detector plate bypass capacitor and according to what I just read there on my schematic it should be 0 0.001 microfarads which converts to a thousand picofarads so let's see what it is and it's coming up as 1251 picofarads so it's a little bit off, but it's not that bad, and I'm certainly not going to worry about it. Um, big difference. It sounds like a lot when you're talking between 1,000 versus 1,200, but when you think about microfarad size, it's the difference of being a .001 or a .0012. So I think it's close enough. We're going to live with it. So now we're getting ready to look at this coil right here. This is the 227 detector uh, plate choke. It's a choke coil for the plate, for the 227 tube. We're going to check that and then if we move down here to this 226 tube here, we're going to check this R1 resistor and this R3 resistor. R1 resistor I believe is about supposed to be 20 ohms and R3 resistor is supposed to be 400 ohms I believe. Anyway, let me get you set up and we'll look at that. So here's the 227 tube. Here's the plate. You can see that, and here's that uh, choke. I don't know if it's showing up on my screen, but here's that switch. Okay, so we're going to check that. I've got them. We're hooked up with our little box here, and we're coming in at 25.4 ohms. So that transformer is not open. So good, good stuff. All right, now. If I can get you down where you can see, I'll show you where we're going to go next. This is the R3, and if you can make out this strip down here, there, this is a wire wound resistor here. It's flat wire wound, and we're going to go ahead and hook up and check those. So let me just see if we can move our leads. We'll check the R3 first. I believe the R3 should be 400 and let's see what we get 511 so uh, that one's a little bit high at 511 it's supposed to be 400 so it's about 25 30 percent I may have to put one in here I might have to replace that one all right so I'm gonna make a mark on this so that I know that I probably want to replace this. I'm going to put a mark right there. Now let's move over and check R1. Get our leads moved over here. I hope I can get on it. And I'll check that one. This one's supposed to be 20. And we're at 32.6. So that one's obviously high, it's, but because this is actually a wire wound, I'm not going to worry about it. That one should be fine. Okay, so we got the DMM out. Let's put it on there. We got 21.5. Now turn it. 21.6 all the way that way. 21.5, 21.4. Twenty-one point five. That's all the way the other way. Twenty-one point six. So it doesn't appear that this pot, this hum control, is doing much. 
I'm not sure how much it should do. That's the problem. I'm not sure how much it should do. Might have to do a little bit of research on it. If any of you guys have any idea what I should be testing at, let me know. All right, I think that this one has gone long enough. I think I've pretty much got everything tested on this uh, receiver, other than I got to do the the, uh, the volume control. But I think I'll save that for the next one. So I think I'm going to go ahead and in this, I don't want it to be too long, and I think I've taken way too much time as it is. So I uh, appreciate you guys sticking with me on this 1929 Victor R32 radio. And that'll do it for this part seven. I thank you for watching Greg's Vintage Workshop. Stay safe out there.